All right, so I'm going to show how to open up and disassemble this HP Model 15-AY011NR. All right, so first what we're going to do is remove the battery. So the battery has these two tabs. You just want to slide them out or actually towards the center. So normally it would be out to the lock position. You'll slide them towards the center. This battery will come out and then you can pull that out like that. <clears throat> I believe there's some screws hidden under these rubber pieces, so let me peel it up and just make sure. Okay, I'm correct. There's a rubber piece or a screw hidden under there. And then let's peel this one up. And yep, there's a screw hidden under there as well. All right, so let's remove all the screws from the bottom. So there's one here. You want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shapes, and lengths. And if you mix them up, you can actually damage the computer. The way I keep track of them is I just put them in the layout that I remove them, and that way I can figure out um, how to put them back, all right? Just like this. Okay. These screws are loose on the corners here. Okay. All right, four here, two here, three here, and then three at the bottom. These screws are kind of tough, so I have to... I don't know why they're so difficult to remove. Okay. Three here. <clears throat> all right, once you got all those screws out, you can pull this CD drive out just like this. Okay, set that aside. There's no screws under there, so that's good. All right, so now what I like to do is I like to open the screen. Um, usually after removing the battery, it's a good idea to press and hold the power button for about 10 to 15 seconds just to drain any power um, from the main board. All right, this will prevent damage if you were to work on other components, especially the screen or LCD, LVDS cable. All right, anyways, once you do that, there's a gap here as you can see. What I like to do is I get my fingernails in that gap. You can use pry tools if you want. But once I do that, I push on the back with my thumbs and the cover or the clips pop out just like that, okay? Very easy, just like this. All right, normally I wouldn't have it upside down like this, but I'm trying to kind of show what's going on. All right, then you just pull this off. Okay, so it looks like the uh, motherboard and everything stays on the top palm rest. So we're gonna lift it up from this side while we have the computer closed kind of have to wiggle the cover around. All right, these clips can be a little bit tricky. What you wanna do is pull this piece out that way as you kind of pull it up. All right, just like that. Then we just continue going around. And there we go, when you lift it up, it actually pops out just like that. So there we got the bottom cover off. All right, the customer's computer isn't turning on, and I think I see why this stick of RAM is not sitting down all the way. So what you do to pop out the RAM, you pull these two tabs to the side. The stick of RAM will come out like this. This is <clears throat> 8 gigs PC4 2133P. So you can put another 8 gig stick, or you can get two 16 gig sticks of this PC4 2133P. I find that getting matching memory sticks works best. So I'm going to see if this will go back down properly, but just put it at an angle like that and push it down. And there we go. It did clip in place properly. So that's good. If you want, you can upgrade this to a two and a half inch SATA SSD. It has a two and a half inch SATA hard drive here to remove that. There's four screws or two screws here and one screw here. Um, I don't know why there isn't a screw there. Does it line up with this okay I see so this screw actually goes into that 
Okay, um, so if you wanted to remove the hard drive, you would just remove those four screws. I guess I can show this, so let me remove the four screws. I don't want to re remove too much because I think that already fixed the problem because the stick of RAM was popping out. Alright. Okay, so remove those three screws. Once you remove the three screws, you can lift this up slightly, just like this. All right, it looks like the whole connector comes up as well, but you want to be careful. I guess you can also release this. You can just flip the tab up and then you can pull this back. Okay, you can disconnect it from either end here or here. And there we go. So this connector would have to transfer over to the new hard drive or the SSD, just like this. And you'd also want to transfer over these metal brackets to the new hard drive or SSD. If you do that, um, depending what you wanted to do, you can clone, you can make a copy of this hard drive onto the SSD before you do this, or you can do a clean install of Windows. All right, so I'm going to clip this back down. Or actually, here you can see this connector goes to this USB port and the LED, um, the lights over there. So before this computer, it wasn't turning on right. It would show the power light, but it wouldn't boot. It wouldn't do anything. So I'm pretty sure it was the RAM. Hopefully it, it's not something else because this RAM was popped out loose a little bit. But if it's, if it's still not going to work after that, either the RAM got damaged or it's a motherboard issue. And I hope that's not the case. All right, here's the optical drive. Um, you can see it's replaceable as well. There's one screw holding it down. This is the keyboard connector. <clears throat> you got these connectors for the trackpad and the trackpad buttons. So the trackpad connects to the trackpad buttons here, and then this connects to the main board here to connect the whole thing. Then you got the speaker connector here. You just grab the wings, and then you can just wiggle the, the connector like this if you want to remove it. Okay, so can't really see because I'm trying to record it, but just grab it like that and you keep wiggling it. Eventually it pops out just like that. All right, got the CMOS battery. If you want to remove that, just use a screwdriver, push it in, and then you can pop it up. I don't want to remove it because <clears throat> then the BIOS will get reset and I don't want to reset that. The optical drive, if you don't really use it, you can actually replace it with a um, adapter. So they have like hard drive adapters for these where it basically replaces the optical drive with a hard drive slot. But you will want to transfer over this bracket here. All right, the CPU or the processor is soldered to the board. The heat sink is right here. The fan, you can remove it without taking everything else out, it looks like. You got this connector here, looks like for the power button that's underneath. Right? Yep. The power button is underneath the hinge here. You got the LCD or LVDS connector here. And you got the charge port or DC jack connector here that runs along. If you want to remove the power button or the charge port, you do have to take the hinge out. Um, there's just the screws underneath and then you can kind of rotate the hinges up. They are really difficult to move, um, but yeah. Then what else? The wireless card. If you want to see how to remove the wireless card, I have videos on a lot of other laptops doing that. Um, but that's pretty much all there is to this. I'm going to put it back together. Hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, please like and subscribe. Help others find my videos. We're going to be putting it back now. Just snap all of this down in place. All right, make sure you clip back down the CD drive as well. Make sure you clip this down as well. Okay. All right, just like that. Put the CD drive back in. All right, and now we're just gonna put all the screws back. Just like this, make sure to put the rubber pieces back as well. If you want, you can add new adhesive because it does get a little less sticky once you take them out. So there's a chance that those might get lost or fall off. Just keep that in mind, all right. And these are customer computers, so I won't be able to go back to it, but if there's something if you have a question, maybe I can help figure it out, but hopefully it's not something related to, or that's already mentioned in the video. If you didn't watch this far, then you're probably going to ask the question anyway, so. Well, but, yeah. All right, get all those screws in. Get the rubber piece back in as well. You can put the battery back in. All right. I'm pretty sure that solved the issue. Uh, yeah. 
Alright, so if you have the same or similar issue, it could be that. Check for that. This happens on a lot of different computers. Usually the RAM stick doesn't come out like that, so I don't know how it popped out. It must not have been installed properly, or they must have thrown the computer. So hopefully the hard drive isn't damaged, because if it was thrown that hard that the RAM popped out, then the hard drive is likely going to be bad. But uh, we will find out once we get all these screws back in and powered on. Alright, so that's all there is to this. Again, please like and subscribe if, uh, and if this video helped you. Please um, share it with other people. Help them find my channel so that they can fix or upgrade their computers as well. Make sure all these things are clipped in. Alright, let's power it up. Let's see here. The power light. I might have to plug it in since I removed the batteries and stuff earlier. Plug this back in. It's powering on. Hard. Oh, yep, the screen is coming on, so that's good. Boot device select failed, so I might be right. The hard drive might be screwed up. We're going to try and see. Hmm. Let's see what's going to happen. Okay, maybe it's working now, I hope. Yep, there we go. All right, so that's all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.